come to the moment of inertia of a sphere, uh, we're going to treat uniform density sphere. We see with sphere that there's only one way of rotating it. You could rotate it around the z-axis, and that means the, sp the sphere is spinning this way. You can rotate it around the y-axis, which means the sphere is rotating this way. You can rotate it around the x-axis, which means the sphere is rotating this way, like this. But since the sphere is uniform, since it's identical in all three dimensions, all three are the same. It comes out that the moment of inertia of the sphere, all three of them are being equal. It's equal to 2 fifths m r squared. So there's again two ways that we could prove this. One, we're going to use spherical shells with single integrals. Okay? Then we're going to use triple integral. Okay? So in order to do the single integral, Here's what we have to imagine. We have a sphere. We have to imagine a spherical shell. Right? However, the problem with the spherical shell is that if you take an axis and cut it and it's starting to spin this way, the spherical shell is not uniform distance from that axis, right? So it's not like the cylindrical shell for the cylinder where everything was uniform. So here's what we have to do. We have to imagine as if the sphere is rotated around a point in the center of the sphere, which it really isn't. You can never rotate just around the point. You have to rotate around an axis. So we'll call that IRR, but it's an imaginary moment of inertia. It would be the moment of inertia if the sphere could rotate around that point. We can calculate the IRR pretty easily because the spherical shell will be uniform distance from that, right? So we can say IR, uh, DIRR is equal to R squared DM, and then we're going to integrate that. IRR is going to equal R squared rho dB, the uh, volume mass density. So then you have IRR equals... Since it's uniform sphere, the row comes out. dv is equal to 4 pi r squared dr. That's true for any spherical shell. The surface area of a sphere times the thickness of the sphere. Then you do this integral. IRR is equal to 4 pi rho integral r to the fourth dr. And then you integrate that from 0 to big R. And then you have this integral is r to the fifth over five. <coughs> okay. Then of course you put the what the uh, volume density is. Rho is equal to the mass of the sphere over the volume of the sphere, which is four thirds pi r cubed. That's the equation for the volume of the sphere. You substitute that into the rho. Okay. So i r r is equal to four pi m over 4 thirds pi r cubed times r to the fifth over 5. So what happens? The 4 pi, 4 pi cancels. The 3 goes to the top. 3m r cubed cancels with that. r squared over 5. Then we use this theorem that says that the moment of inertia ixx, which equals iyy, which equals izz, this is always equal to two-thirds IRR, okay? So uh, remember IRR was just an imaginary concept as if the sphere could rotate around its center, but it didn't really exist. So we calculated that, and then we take two-thirds of that. We always take two-thirds of whatever we get for IRR. So IXX, therefore, is going to be two-thirds of that. Well, two-thirds of three-fifths gives you what? Basically, that gives you two-fifths, right? Two-fifths m r squared, and that would be the equation for the moment of inertia of a sphere. This is a solid sphere, okay? What if the sphere was hollow? What would happen? Like, let's say, a basketball, a tennis ball, something that doesn't have anything material inside, well, if we use this method, if it's a hollow sphere, 
then there's nothing inside. So if we do a spherical shell, the spherical shell is only on the outside, right? So the IRR becomes um, R squared M. And since all of the mass is concentrated on the outside, there's no need to integrate. It's just R squared M. Then IXX is two thirds of that. It goes two thirds m r squared. And this is actually the equation for the moment of inertia of a hollow sphere. Two thirds m r squared. The moment of inertia of a solid sphere is two fifths m r squared. So if the two race down the hill, who wins? The solid sphere wins because two fifths is a smaller ratio than two thirds, right? The solid sphere has the least moment of inertia between a solid and a hollow sphere, and it even beats the solid cylinder. The solid cylinder was half mR squared. So two-fifths is a ratio smaller than a half, and therefore two-fifths should win the half. The half should win the two-thirds. So the solid cylinder wins the race against the hollow sphere, but it loses to a uh, solid sphere. How about a hollow uh, cylinder? Hollow cylinder, well, it's just basically everything is uniform, so it's just rolling, everything is uniform, it's mR squared, the moment of inertia. So this is the slowest out of them all. It's double the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder, and it loses to any of them. So again, you can go and watch the demos uh, playlist and see some demos that I have on this um, section. So let's actually now that we have the proven of the two fifths and the two thirds, let's go and prove this with uh, triple integrals and we're going to perform the integral in spherical coordinates. Now we come to the um, spherical coordinate derivation of the moment of inertia of a sphere which is two fifths mr squared. We would uh, choose our sphere like this and we would have our axis spinning this way and we would have our the volume a little piece of volume here and this is r and this is phi and the angle around if it's like this the angle around like this way it would be theta so we can we know from spherical coordinates that we have phi which goes from zero to pi it's the angle as measured from the vertical and it goes all the way from zero to pi Theta measures the angle around this way. It goes from zero to two pi. And of course, R goes from zero to R. Sometimes we also call that rho, okay? So the moment of inertia of that little piece is gonna equal what? It's distance, this distance from the axis, the shortest distance. So what is that distance? Well, that is actually R sine of pi, right? So we don't want to know the distance exactly from the center. We want to know the distance from the, the z-axis, if, uh, if we call that the z. So that distance is going to be r sine of phi. So that distance squared times dm. Okay? dm is again going to be rho dv. So this is going to be xx, or it could be zz or yy. They're all the same for the sphere. Okay? So let's change it to ZZ, since we call that the Z-axis, right? And we're going to have R squared sine squared phi. This is rho dV. Now, what's dV for in spherical coordinates? dV in spherical coordinates uh, is equal to R squared sine of phi, dR, d phi, d data. Now, if we put that one here, we have DIZZ r squared sine squared phi rho and then dv is equal to um, r squared sine phi dr d phi d theta and then we're going to integrate that and the rho comes out of the integral and then we integrate that and we have i uh, zz okay so what is that equal to so we actually have triple integral rho Okay, so we have what? We could do the r, square, uh, r integral, r to the fourth dr from 0 to r. 
then we have sine phi d phi, then we have d theta, okay? <coughs> so, actually, no, we have actually sine cubed, right? Because we, uh, we had the sine of phi from the distance, which we squared, then we have another sign, so we actually have sine cubed phi, okay? So this integral here is going to be dz rho integral integral. So that, of course, that's going to be r to the fifth over five. Then we're going to have sine cubed phi d phi d theta from zero to pi. So if you do that integral, sine cubed phi d phi from zero to pi, I'm not going to go through the steps of that. You could either do it with a TI uh, 92 or any kind of TI, uh, TI 89, TI 86, or any TI, or you could do it by hand. So it takes some time, but this integral, 0 to pi sine cubed phi d phi, comes out to be 4 thirds. It's just a number. There's no pi in the answer. So now we have i z z is equal to rho r to the fifth over five, four thirds comes out. And then you're left with integral zero to two pi of d theta, which is the last integral of the triple integral. So that gives you two, uh, two pi, right? At rho r to the fifth over five, four thirds times two pi. Then the last thing is we put what the rho is equal to. Rho is the mass of the sphere over the volume of the sphere, which is 4 thirds pi uh, r cubed. Now, look at what's going to happen. This 4 thirds is going to cancel with this 4 thirds, which came from the integral of sine cubed uh, pi. This pi is going to cancel with this pi. R cubed is going to cancel with this, make it R squared. Then you're going to have uh, two fifths m R squared. So the moment of inertia z z is equal to two fifths m R squared. With this way of doing it, spherical coordinates, we didn't have to use that theorem that says I x x is two thirds of I R R. We did it straight from spherical coordinates and we got the same answer, two fifths m R squared. With the other way of doing it, we first do it with a spherical shell, then whatever answer we get, we take two-thirds of that. Okay? Thank you very much.